Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back, happy to welcome to the program two gentlemen from Console. I've got Brad, Man Brad Mandel, who's the CRO, Chief Revenue Officer, uh, and I've got uh, Bill Norton, who's the Chief Scientist, and Dr. Peering. That's right. You got to explain that. Sure, um, well, um, Dr. Peering um, is a moniker I use when I write blogs about how internet interconnection works. Excellent, that, Wait, that, that makes sense. More, yeah. You got to tell them more than that. Oh, uh, well, what else do you want to know, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get the name Dr. Pairing? Why did you come up with that? Yeah, well, um, I, f I retired from uh, working at Equinix and um, started working a little bit with the DKIX, the German Internet Exchange in Frankfurt. And um, one of the suggestions that came from one of my good friends, Frank Orlowski, was, you guys should write a, Bill, you should write a blog for our DKIX newsletter. And uh, since I explained things very much like a, I don't know, like a scientist would, would explain things, like a, a PhD, very analytical, a lot yeah. of graphs and such. Um, he thought Dr. Peering would be a good moniker and it kind of stuck. Excellent. That's well, great. I think most people at this show probably know Equinix, uh, you know, data centers, of course, the Amazon Direct Connect. Uh, I've actually been through some of the data centers. You know, I'm, I'm an engineer by training, used to work in a very large interoperability lab. So I always love when you can go through and you know, see the gear and touch it. Uh, you know, Brad, you know, talk about how console kind of fits into kind of the whole ecosystem, of Amazon, what's going on in cloud. We talked about some of the networking pieces of it. Sure, think of us as very disruptive software now. If you think about the basement of enterprises, where are those basements today? Some of them are still down in the basement, connected, and a lot of that now is where? Virtual somewhere else. Yeah. And yet they still want the same connectivity, the same security, the same reliability, and we're offering a lot of those solutions now for the, those enterprises. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the keynotes here at Amazon, you know, they talk about how, you know, kind of the, the enterprise data centers, you know, shrinking and going away, everything's going to the cloud, but we, we also saw some nuances to kind of the, the hybrid cloud work, so, you know, networking's been one of those bottlenecks that we've seen in the industry uh, for a long time, you know, yeah. how, how are you helping to kind of, that agility and things like that, don't fit into, you know, my tradition, I'm, I'm a networking guy by background, that's not yeah. how I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting, if you look at the environment and the internet today, you've got two halves of the ecosystem, on one half, you've got the public internet where all traffic is intermingled with one another and these denial of service attacks and such that traverse that path that you care about could disrupt your interaction with the endpoint you want to connect to. That's on the public side. On the private side, we've always seen a private and direct dedicated interconnection happening between the tier one ISPs, for example, or between very large network service providers. They've always been on the private side for interconnecting their networks together. So what we're seeing happen on the console ecosystem now is the same type of thing. Companies that might have a public facing front on the public internet, behind the scenes need reliable direct connectivity to the suppliers and they might have three or four or five different suppliers that they depend on. They cannot deliver this service without those suppliers. So that's what's called a community of interest, a coin, and that connection between those is called a private coin because they own those relationships with those providers. The really cool thing though is those providers on the ecosystem, if they want to be a supplier for other companies on that ecosystem, they're already attached and it's simply a soft configuration to extend those services to yet another supplier that has a front end that serves the internet. <laughs> it's kind of a neat ecosystem application. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Brad, I understand why we had the little setup as the explanation why he got Dr. Peering. Exactly. I think it's a well-deserved <laughs> moniker. Uh, Brad, the, the networking industry is probably, you know, out of all the disruptions that's going to be going on, it's been taking kind of the longest to kind of disrupt. You say software, and I think, you know, oh, there's the thing software-defined networking, there's NFV. Right. Um, I had a friend of mine walk through the show floor here, and he's like, oh my God, there's so many like underlay, overlays, things like this, you know, wow, uh, you know, what's going on? You know, how does what you offer, uh, you know, how, how do people buy it? You know, how does it fit into, uh, you know, their purchasing decision, and how, how does it make their businesses better? Yeah, so think about, the enterprises of the past, they looked at it and said, I have all these apps, I have all this interconnectivity, I have MPLS networks connecting all my branch offices, and that's what they had. Now, they want that same type of experience, but it's now going to 
10, 15, 20 SaaS providers. It's going to AWS for my hybrid cloud. It could be connecting to a different data center that's co-load somewhere in their network. And we're being able to provide that same interconnectivity through a software solution that allows them to connect to all of that basically seamlessly. All right, so uh, Dr. Peering, <laughs> could you please explain to the class security in this kind of environment? Yeah. I, I, if you were ranking everything, I'm saying you know, on a, from one to 100, where'd security fit on the list? Number one. Okay, so Number how does one. it fit? With, um, it's, it's a really interesting thing. The security aspect to having a private dedicated ecosystem, it comes in a couple of different forms. The first form is, on average between any two destinations on the internet, there are four and a half networks, each of which has routers and links that could be compromised and so forth. And the, the, the fundamental problem there is, this is what the security guys call a large attack surface. A large attack surface. Yeah, yeah. Because we, any we, one of those things can disrupt <laughs> Absolutely, I'm saying, saying we would talk about IOT is yeah. giving us orders of magnitude more attack surface than we right. have in the past. So oh, yeah, please yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> if you go directly, what you're doing is you're decreasing the size of the attack surface down to um, this one uh, connection. This, this connection, by the way, is not over the internet. This connection is a dedicated uh, network path between these two endpoints. Um, and it's a layer two infrastructure, which means that the layer three stuff can't address the underlying layer two stuff. As a side effect, you simply cannot attack what you cannot see. All right. <laughs> Makes sense? <laughs> Brad, a lot of announcements here uh, from Amazon. You know, I, I look at some of the monitoring they're doing, they're expanding their ecosystem, the, the marketplace is, is growing phenomenal. Um, talk us about kind of your, your partnership with Amazon, how you see it maturing, anything relevant in the announcements this week that we should know about. Yeah, so the partnership with Amazon is very important to us and we're very excited about it. And as you look at our partnership with them and how they look at us, we're, we're a connectivity provider, but much more. And the reason I say that, we were, we've been talking to a lot of Amazon customers. They are very excited about what we're doing connecting to Amazon. And then they're additionally excited about the ability, once they're connected to us, they can go to a lot of different SaaS providers. And when I talk to the Amazon teams, that's what they want to provide to their customers. They want to provide an enterprise solution that not only connects to them, but brings more value to their customers to connect to lots of SaaS providers. All right. I was just pleased to chime in on that. The other thing that we're finding is that the simplicity of our solution is actually one of the things that are, it's really resonating with the population here. The idea that you can connect into the ecosystem once and start pointing and clicking at the SaaS companies and infrastructure companies that you want to connect to merely by clicking a button is really quite important. Um, in the old days, when I was doing uh, appearing, um, you know, interconnections might take weeks or months to, to get set up, ordering equipment, deploying it across the, uh, the globe and such. Uh, this is a much simpler approach, it's to really turnkey, completely automated. Yeah, how many steps and how much time does it take these days to make a change with what you're doing? Um, it could be instantaneous. But that's pretty fast. Pretty yeah. fast. And, and <laughs> let me add on the AWS partnership, the excitement, there, the announcements this week are unbelievable. The amount of rapid increase in performance and new tools, new feature, new functionality, the rate of acceleration by Amazon is just breathtaking. And it only increases the amount of security you need, the reliability you need, the performance you need, because more and more of your strategic load, workloads are going to be in Amazon. And we're going to be the guys that help you connect that together. All right, so, so Bill, you know, let, let's look forward a, lo a little bit. You know, what do you see going forward? What are some of the, the kind of challenges that you guys are looking at tackling, kind of the industry as a whole? You know, give the homework for uh, you know, the, the, the students watching that they need to you know, be ready for next year's test. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think right now, like as I said, we're migrating into this private coin ecosystem where the, the private side is starting to build out with you know, one company interacting with a whole bunch of other suppliers and another uh, perhaps competitor that's interacting with those same suppliers. Those coins are starting to build up a pretty robust ecosystem for those individual companies. So I, I think that's going to continue to evolve. The other thing I think would be really interesting is what if these weren't necessarily companies but individual service ports that could be assimilated together, much like Nike doesn't actually make the shoes themselves. They're the ones who assemble the marketing team and all the infrastructure to make it work uh, you might see the same thing with next generation internet services. It's really just a matter of plugging in the right combination of ports uh, on a private ecosystem and then provide a front end on top of that. It's really interesting. Yeah. 
Brad, any uh, kind of you know interesting use case or customer stories uh, that, that that you'd want to share? Yeah, I think that uh, in a lot of the verticals we are participating in, healthcare, financial, manufacturing, uh, pharmaceutical, they really are excited about the ability to connect, as Bill said, this, commu this private community of interest, but also just being able to get to their SaaS providers efficiently, securely, on a private network that can expand for them. All right, and, and Brad, I'll give you the final word, uh, kind of big takeaways from, from the show, uh, things as, uh, if, you know, something you've run across, conversations you've had, uh, but yeah, give so us a So big takeaway take from the show one is amazing turnout. Yeah. You know, 32,000 plus people, from last year, 19,000 or so. You can see the evolution, how rapidly people are going to the cloud in, in all aspects. We're seeing, you know, anywhere between 15 to 30 SaaS applications and enterprises now. And even the, you know, the CIOs and the CEOs that we talk to, they're like, well, we don't have any SaaS providers in our network. And then you ask them a few questions, they're like, well, yeah, maybe we do. And so that, that idea of security and reliability and performance is, is just creeping into everybody's you know, nomenclature now. All right, well, Fred and Bill, really appreciate you, you coming in uh, with, with all the education uh, and, and the explanations and everything here. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from AWS reInvent 2016, Las Vegas, 32,000 people. You're watching theCUBE.